Tonight on Trend Kill Radio, Philip Anselmo, formerly of Pantera, is in deep shit with New Zealand, and Skynet has taken over Metallica. All this and more coming up on Trend Kill Radio. People will bow to it. Hey, hey! <laughs> What's up, everybody? This is Tranquil Radio, and I am your host, Sean Ryan. Coley and Jimothy have the night off, so I have a very special guest, our fourth unofficial member, Michelle Burlingame from Slurmcast, a podcast for no reason. She always saves my ass. We have a ton of shit, so just be sure to subscribe, and let's just get it started right now. Philip and Selmo, formerly a Pantera, is in now a band called Philip H. Anselmo and the Illegals. And they were going on tour <laughs> in New Zealand, but not anymore. They have been hashtag canceled. Hashtag canceled. Hashtag canceled. Yeah. They were scheduled to go to New Zealand, and they were going to go to Christchurch and Auckland. But prior to this, uh, three years ago, there was something called Dime Bash out in Hollywood. Now, as you know, Philip Anselmo was the lead singer of Pantera, and Dimebag Daryl Abbott was tragically uh, murdered. Gun, he, he was tragic- down. Yeah, tragically taken down uh, at a show in Columbus. Two thousand and I was living there. You at were the time. yeah, you were in, I was in Columbus. School. Yeah, I was in high school, and one of my friends was there, and she was like late to school the next day. I feel like she didn't show up till lunch because she was on one of the buses getting questioned by the police about like what she saw. Holy it's crazy. shit. Yeah. Like I said, there was a show called Dime Bash back three years ago in Hollywood where many of the metal community had come together in celebration of Dimebag Daryl and done, you know, just various songs and, you know, did Pantera shit and blah, blah, blah. And everybody was together and there's members of Anthrax and Machine Head, Pantera and this and that. And like it was a wild ass show. But the thing that really stole the show and for all the wrong reasons was Phil Anselmo, uh, at the end of his gig, he, um, how do I put this? Did a Nazi salute. There you go. Yeah. He did a Nazi salute and then shouted, White, White power. power. It's been a pleasure having all of you here and all of us in the distance. Ryan Theo, stand up and shout. That's the foundation. As we know, uh, Phil has, has always just battled all kinds of problems with drugs and drinking. And the guy's just, you know, I, I never believe him when he says he's sober. He's just a total fucking mess. And it was just obvious to see that the dude was just wasted. He's got a big old beer belly and shit going on. But he, he tried to come up with this excuse that it was like, oh, we, oh, we were drinking white wine in the backstage and you know, there was people heckling me. And uh, so I, uh, so I just said, white power, get it? Just you know, white wine, white power. Because that's how he talks. That excuse did not fly. Days after that incident, Rob Flynn from Machine Head, you know, he had come out and he, he recorded like a whole eleven minute, I don't know, like a testimonial about that show and just going like, yeah, I was there, I was backstage, I was with Phil. And I assure you, there was no Pinot Grigio. (laughs) No white wine to be (laughs) There was no white wine. In fact, Phil Anselmo was drinking Bex, a German beer! German! Hmm. Mm, Coincidence? Coincidence? I think think not. not. (laughs) Many people had come out and just gone like, you know, Phil is just an asshole. You know, he does things like this, and he says things like this, and a lot of his fans come to his defense. But, I mean, those are just, like, the same, like, dumb fucking people that just don't get it. Back when Vinnie Paul was still alive, he just goes, I can't speak for that dick. And this is what he went on to say. Yeah, so 2017, Anselmo said that it was false journalism in the metal community basically that saying that he was a racist because of what he did at that dime bash thing but like false journalism to me sounds a lot like fake Fake news news. you are fake news basically besides the point because this is three-year-old news but what had happened actually recently if you've been reading or listening to any kind of news people uh, live under a rock yeah i had no idea for you see i have been on mars for the last decade in a cave 
with my eyes shut and my fingers in my ears. New Zealand, you know, in the city of Christchurch, there was 50 people murdered in a mass shooting at a Muslim church. Phil Anselmo and the illegals, they were scheduled to go to New Zealand and go play some shows, but the concert promoters, they were having Phil there, but they had caught wind of the stories that had come out three years ago and said, I don't think this is a good time for Definitely. you, Mr. Right. White Power coming here after we just had 50 Muslim people murdered. It's some tough shit to to talk about, but this is a huge national tragedy for them. I yeah, think, it's a very big it deal. it should be. It's very sad, and you just don't want that kind of... Yeah, you don't uh, want a guy that uh, zig heils yeah. and says yeah. white power coming to the town that, that just recently had a mass murder of Muslim people. Who was screaming white power while he was taking these people out. The Christchurch show was originally scheduled for inner city venue Empire. The gig was then shifted to Club Tavern, which is now publicly announced that Anselmo concert will not go ahead. Quote, the Philip Anselmo gig has been canceled. A Facebook post said, we do not and will not support white supremacy or racism. The next scheduled day on March 27th was in Auckland's Galatis venue, where Anselmo was scheduled to play and also announced that the gig will no longer take place. They say, quote, Galatos will not be hosting the show in our venue on the above date, the venue said in a statement. Just today, information has come to hand which has made us uncomfortable about proceeding with the show. The moral of the story is uh, Phil Anselmo is no longer welcome in New Zealand. He done fucked up. You done messed up, A.A. Hey, Ron! And I, I don't care. I mean, I have been blackout wasted and I have never done anything like that for like what reason? Why would you do that? Why would you be such a dick on purpose? Sorry, Phil. <laughs> yeah. You're done. And now that we fumbled through that last segment, we have one more. So Metallica, as you know, have done a, an incredible album. I really loved it. SNM, back 20 years ago. And they are marking their 20-year anniversary by doing another version with the San Francisco Symphony entitled the SNM 2. Uh, the and they will be commemorating that September 6th at the new San Francisco Chase Center. But don't try to go because you can't get tickets. Many Metallica fans, they are involved with like groups and stuff that they are like they're members of Metallica shit. Yeah, and like, like so groups, they get like fan a, club. Yeah. There was Metallica pre-sales that were going on and a lot of the fans were completely blocked out due to bots. The <laughs> fucking rise of the machines and the tickets is starting right now. <laughs> Okay, Cyberdyne Systems, now, yeah. Skynet, don't, don't it's worry. all happening! Don't, don't listen to her! It's happening! They're just trying to see Metallica. So essentially all these tickets are just fucking disappearing in pre-sale and then immediately going up on StubHub. Like, resale immediately for, for thousands and thousands of dollars, which Yeah, before before sucks. fans can even, like, you know? click the fucking space bar. Right. Like, these things are, like, so it's guaranteed these things are bots. And Ticketmaster, of course, always has something to do with this because Ticket Bastard is the fucking worst. <laughs> they and I have no have, idea. They, they've yeah. had lawsuits against them, and, like, mm -hmm. like nothing fucking happens to these guys. Like, they just get away. Oh, all like, of I, the ticket companies do this. And I have personal experiences from trying to get KISS tickets recently. Why don't they just advertise the price of the actual ticket instead of telling you, like, oh, you can get this for $139. Huh, just kidding, it's $159. Convenience fees, though, for online ticket sales. That is fucking bullshit. There's nothing convenient about that. There's nothing about convenient that. about Fuck it. You. It's it's if anything you should be charging more to have like tickets printed out bullshit. But I, I, we're talking about Metallica here. I know. Uh, we'll uh, get but, back on track. But uh, that's just. But just Metallica fans that were our members and they have guaranteed presale to their shows that are going to the show on September sixth to go see Symphony and Metallica two. They went on the very second and they completely got screwed. All their tickets, they went to bots, they went to third-party sellers. When people are pissed off, they go to Reddit and they go to Twitter and they bitch. I mean, yeah. that's just America. Gsum Dubby goes on to say, can we talk about how insanely high the new Chase Center tickets are going to be? This is pre-sale for Metallica. Face value. Cheapest tickets are $650 each for the upper deck. Yes, when everybody looks like Polly Pockets. Would you pay $650 to watch a Polly Pocket walk around on stage about this yeah. big? Yeah. No. For those of you who know what Polly Pocket is, <laughs> if you're younger. Knows what Polly Pocket is. <laughs> and as our uh, local correspondent, we have a Metallica expert, a man named Jason Garkowski, who uh, 
personal close friend of mine. This guy, I swear to God, he's probably gonna go until one of the members of Metallica dies. And with me today, we have resident Metallica expert, Jason Longhair Garkowski. Hey. <laughs> he up? has been to, uh, how many fucking shows of Metallica have you been to? Just hit 75 in Grand Rapids. How many cars have you bought for Lars? Uh, probably a <laughs> half of one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but he's going to further explain a little bit more in detail what we were talking about with the Metallica bot issue. I talked to you, and you said, like, you're kind of in the middle of it a little bit. This dude has traveled, like, the fucking world to go see Metallica. He has friends from every fucking continent probably even Antarctica, but he's definitely ingrained in this, so he can kind of further explain a little bit more of what the story actually wasn't telling us because he's like Metallica's number one fan. What have you heard about this? You know, I just wrapped up doing the whole North American tour, like th 28 out of the 35 you shows. You got the, the black pass, don't you? Yeah, I had the black ticket. So me and many other you friends. You can go have, anywhere any show in, you in want America, it, right? Um, it was the 35 shows. So out of the 35, <laughs> I did 28, but like I have my friend Sarah, Joe, and Pete, they all did 32, and then there were two other people that did all 35. We all literally got back from that last week, and everybody seriously was like in depression mode. Oh my God, when are we going to see everybody? Like we had friends from like friends from Australia and Norway and Sweden and Jeez. all over the States. Everybody's going home. Everybody's all sad and depressed. Well, then all of a sudden it's like Monday. Oh, Metallica is opening the Chase Center. Yeah, S and M too. Yeah. Okay. So, so if, yeah, so these these pre-advanced tickets for members like yourself mm -hmm. go out. What happened? There was a f fan club years ago. You had to pay for it. So they kind of grandfathered everybody that used to pay for it into being legacy members. Yeah. And then everybody else, like, you could sign up now and be a free member. So you're just a fifth member. Well, so legacy, we had an extra hour on the pre-sale. So we all had our ticket codes. Mind you, everybody was freaking out about these shows. <laughs> this Metallica world and Metallica family is pretty crazy. I happened to get through and got two tickets. But everybody else I knew, nobody was able to get them. As the day went on, I was all right, I'm going to try again the next pre-sale for the fifth members. Legacy, we all had one code that should be for both. All of a sudden, when the fifth member pre-sale happened, our codes didn't work for Legacy members. So that people started freaking out, didn't know what to do, and they were gone instantly. So is this a bot? system like is this is, does this have to do with Ticketmaster? i mean like no. these, things, these things went on StubHub like immediately i mean we know ticket bastard is like corrupt as dude they're shit. the evil empire them and they live are nation awful. they're all in bed together so yeah we, we all get that so the metallica fan club tickets went on sale through tickets today so Problem. what the fuck happened let's um, get down the brass tacks what happened what happened i feel and some of it was confirmed by the band's people through their message boards and stuff later on this was not a metallica show i mean it is but it wasn't just their own headline show i mean they're literally opening the chase center in yeah. san francisco so that right there is a big thing for the locals for the sports team for the mayor for season ticket holders for the investors because it's a privately funded stadium i think so those people already had their pools of tickets you know when before this was even announced and so you figure it holds eighteen thousand people chop that in half we'll say nine thousand are ready spoken for so out of that nine thousand metallica only gets probably 2000 but the demand was just so high people were freaking out like oh they're already on StubHub during our pre-sale yeah but those tickets that were available on StubHub, do they were crazy numbers because they know people aren't going to pay that they're like placeholders because they're going to try and get whatever they can and a lot of them were in groups of four during our fan club pre-sale you can only get two. two so they weren't the fan club tickets and then i also noticed everybody that got a fan club ticket no matter what section you were rows like one through six or one through twelve all the tickets on StubHub are rows 14, row 20, row... So they're not the fan club tickets. So a lot of people misconstrued it all that, I feel. Yeah, there are bots, but the bots didn't really take effect until like the Chase pre-sale, the normal on sale, the Warriors pre-sale, or all that stuff. Yeah. I don't really think it was the bots during the fan club pre-sale. There was a fuck up with the codes. That's all on tickets today. They didn't make the legacy pre-sales work. All right. Well, there you have it. Fucking expert right here. He knows what's up. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know, I don't know. I'm just a fan, but dude, I've been doing this for so long. Like, dude, tickets for all these events pop up on StubHub. I mean, dude, here in Cleveland, wait till the All-Star game for the baseball. Dude, they're going to be all over StubHub. Same thing. We're not going to be able to get tickets because they're ready on StubHub because there's only 500 available or 1,000 available. It's really a corrupt system. Oh, it totally I, I is. People do give Metallica like a lot of shit. I probably shouldn't even be saying this on here. The band is aware. You know, everybody's aware of what you guys are going through. I have friends that have paid 900 bucks for tickets on StubHub, and they're freaking out. But the rumor is that another show is going to be announced, and we think it's going to be kind of fan clubbers get the first 
numbers crack. Yeah. For sure this time they're going to find a way to make it work for us. All because, right. dude, like, people are traveling from all over for these shows. I know. You guys travel continents. Yeah. Dude, like, my, <laughs> fr- my friends from Australia, they have the Australian black ticket and the European black ticket. Two of them are talking about foregoing all the European black ticket shows just to fly to the U.S. for this one show. You guys are fucking crazy. Uh-huh. <laughs> you're crazy. I like you. But you're crazy. <laughs> dude, I- I'm small potatoes compared to some of these people. <laughs> I know. You, um, if if you guys have been longtime viewers, you have seen Andrew Scambotti, our resident Kiss expert, who is actually going to see Kiss. I, I think he already saw him I think last, la- I think last, last night, night in, at, New York in Connecticut. Just some some of you people are insane. I wish I could love a band that much. But I want to thank Jason so much for coming out, man. Oh, yeah, I appreciate man. it awesome. very much. And that is all we got right now. Thank you. No problem. And that is all we have for tonight on Trent Kill Radio. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much to our guest host, Anytime. Michelle Burlingame from Slurmcast, a podcast for no raisin. You can find her on just pretty much any all podcast. Yes. <laughs> Anywhere that podcasts are for free. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. Please go to Facebook.com slash TrentKillRadio216 and like our page. Please like and subscribe to our show. That is all we have. Thank you very much. I am your host, Sean Ryan, and this my lovely guest host. Michelle Burlingame. Thank you so much for coming out, and thank you so much for watching. This is Trend Kill Radio. Bow to it. Phil Ip and Selmo. You heard? <laughs> <laughs> is that how they do that? I, I don't know. Phil Ip. Is this, is this <laughs> clapping back? I do I, not know. <laughs> okay. Fuck. <laughs> not okay. <laughs> there is always a burp or a, a screw up on my part that will <laughs> make the uh, cutting room floor. <laughs> I just blew it into Spin, that wall. Blow it that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna, like, next time it's just going right into your hair. Today, Junior.